Substance misuse and abuse has been quite a challenge in the United States for many years and every year it seems to get worse and in particular that's because we're seeing more and more adulterants in the commonly used or misused substances. Kentucky, um, like unfortunately its neighbors, West Virginia and Tennessee, tend to be a hot spot relative to substance use disorder. And in particular, the region where I live and work is uh, especially hard hit. And that is because uh, Interstate 75 runs right through this region. And that's a major thoroughfare that runs from Mexico and the Gulf, where a lot of the illicit substances come into the country, all the way up to Chicago. And so we are, we are a great stopping point for a lot of the trafficking. When I first started working here, fi just five years ago in Owen County, there was no hospital there, there's no urgent care, there was no emergency room, there was no specialty care. Pretty much anything that you buy illicitly is going to be adulterated. And the adulterants are powerful and deadly. And you never know um, what your, the medication that you're getting might be, might be contaminated with. And so the biggest um, challenge, of course, is death and, and overdose. But along with that, of course, it, it is very difficult to, to hold a regular job when you need to take care of your, um, your, your substance needs on top of that. A huge issue is transportation. There is no bus service there, there's no Uber, there's no Lyft, and unless you own your own car and your car runs, then it's very difficult to access anything. So for many people, even if there were services, they would have just a challenging time being able to physically get to the resource. So what we're trying to do in Owen and Carroll County is build everything all at once. So the first thing we did was hire care coordinators. And these are people from the community whose job it is, is to know where everything is and the best way to get there. I always feel that it's better to reach someone always a preventative before someone's in a crisis situation, before they're in, I don't know where else to go and they're so desperate. So if I'm reaching someone and I'm talking to them while they may not be ready for treatment at that moment, I'm at least making a connection with them. So when they are in that crisis situation and they're ramped up on fear and not knowing, I'm a familiar face, I've at least talked to them. We recruited people with lived experience um, and so people who are in long-term recovery who used to um, deal in dope, they now deal in hope. And then my job and what we have done is just try to equip them to do the work because they're the best resource, they know how to get out. So in order to address the barrier of transportation, the peer support specialists have been phenomenal in helping us to get people where they need to go, whether it's a doctor's appointment or to a treatment facility or sometimes even to the pharmacy or a grocery store. We've also started some programs in schools because the best way to alleviate substance use disorder is to try to prevent it before it begins. And this started in a program in Carroll County where um, students were able to take a program called Moral Recognition Therapy instead of either being expelled or suspended or being sent to prison in some cases. You wouldn't believe the amount of kids that I talk to that have used for five, six, seven years and they may, may be only 14 years old. So we really have to break that chain as they grow up in our school system, in our community. So the MRT program, um, is a program that is evidence-based and um, it helps a student or a youth identify issues that they may have within themselves um, and even their family units and it helps them conquer any potential substance use disorders, mental health disorders that they may have or at least get help for those. This program now has grown substantially. We've also now have a group of youth mentors who reach out help, support, as well as refer people to um, what sort of services might be available in their school. I think a lot of times kids, especially at this age and, and adults do, struggle with identifying um, what they need and I think this type of group, this type of therapy is really good at that. A final thing we've done is at bring telehealth to um, a broader range of residents in Owen and Carroll County. We got a grant from the federal government to be able to put in telehealth equipment in all of the schools as well as in the health departments. And the reason we wanted to put it in the schools is not just so students would be able to access healthcare immediately, but so could their parents, and so could the teachers, and so can community members. One of the main benefits 
um, is keeping the kids in school. And we also use telehealth for our mental health as well. So any student that needs a risk assessment um, or if they just need somebody to talk to and it can't wait, then we can use telehealth for that as well. We do now have um, a treatment facility in Owen County that serves women with substance use disorder. But the challenge we have right now is once they've completed their treatment there, they really have no place to go. Um, and so we are working on putting together recovery housing for these ladies and their children um, so that they will have a safe place to live. So additional component in the programs that we offer, both in the rural counties, but also in northern, um, the northern cities, as well as across the river in Cincinnati, are pipeline programs. And these are programs where we target underserved regions to bring the youth to campus and uh, to provide programming in the schools to help them envision themselves seeking um, higher education, envisioning themselves working in their communities in healthcare. I hope we can achieve and sustain a, a recovery community where we're meeting the needs of people right now, whether they're in the jail, whether they're on the streets, getting them, seeing them through treatment, seeing them back into our community and being able to integrate them back into to working and then helping them help other people in turn. The community needs education, it needs resources, um, it needs opportunity and it needs hope. And I think between MRT, between IHI and the community in general, we can give all those things. Mm -hmm.